Seats Racing fans because we've got some double barreled racing action for you this week. Act one will be staged right here at Ontario's famed Most Board Park. Act two, coming to you from one of Canada's fastest and most beautiful tracks, Westwood in British Columbia. Hello everyone, I'm Jim Paulson, and I'll be your host for Eastern Racing Action. Our special guest commentator, and as a past competitor, a man who certainly knows players GM racing inside and out, Paul Gilgan is standing by to bring you the Hot Shoe Express from the West. And of course, our regular commentator, Paul Chater, will be with us for both events. Now, let's get right down to it. Two championships are on the line. This week, it's the East and West Finals in the exciting Players Limited GM Motorsports Series from Mostport Park and Westwood Motorsport. Welcome back for more racing excitement as we now move to the West Coast and beautiful Westwood, British Columbia for the Players Limited GM Motorsport Western Series Final. It is a hot one on the coast today, and here with a very special guest is Paul Gilgan. Lisa, I have one question for you. Is your daddy going to win the race today? Yeah. How come? Because he's a good race driver. What do you see today, Frank? You're starting in the third row, uh, pole position. Uh, how's the race going to go? Uh, well, I heard of what happened in the east, and I don't want a repeat of that, so I think I'm going to be pretty careful. It's never over till it's over, is it? It sure isn't. Well, we asked your daughter, Lisa, a few minutes ago, and uh, she only had one name to give us, and guess what it was? <laughs> I hope it was mine. It better be. <laughs> John, well, you came to Vancouver in seventh. You're going into the race in sixth. Have you got your flights booked next week? Well, I, I've got the tickets, but uh, I'm hoping to use them. What are you looking to do today? You're starting on the second row, a great position. Uh, excellent position. I just uh, hope to drive with some controlled aggression, stay on the track, and uh, finish ahead of my hood. Right now, we're in a situation where I'm starting on the inside of the fifth row. John is up on the second row, and there's a lot of fast cars in between me and him. So I've got to get there as fast as I can. I'm going to be charging for everything I'm worth because that's for the last ticket to Montreal, to, to Saint-Gervais, and uh, we want it pretty bad, and we're going to have to work for it, but I'm prepared to do that. After a hectic qualifying session, number one Frank Allers has the pole in a Western Championship all but sewn up. Dowler needed a top qualifying spot to have a shot at that championship. He's in seventh. Andy Mahood dueling John Simonson for sixth and final spot in the national shootout. Simonson qualified third, Mahood ninth. Another great story here, Trevor Siebert, remarkable Western Rookie of the Year, had problems in qualifying, gritted 13th. He too with an outside shot at that driver's title. He'll be gunning hard today. Couple of surprises. Orville Murchie in sixth and Rick Payne in fourth. They gritted well today. They're out to play a spoilers roll. Warm, pleasant day at Westwood. Here's Paul. Our top six qualifiers, Orville Murchie, Tony Morris, Rick Payne, John Simonson, Wade Lee, and Frank Allard. With the inverted grid, Orville Murchie finds himself in an unaccustomed pole position, and as the drivers complete the pace lap, here are their thoughts on this Western final. No, my, my goal right now is to win the West Series. You know, the, this race out east is, is great and all, but we gotta, you know, we gotta prove to people that we can win in the West before we can win in the East. Well, I'm, I'm really trying to concentrate on winning this series here in the West first, uh, without looking too much at next week. But it's always in your mind. There's a big uh, prize fund there, so it's in your mind. This morning I wasn't, didn't have too much confidence in what was going to happen out here. But after hearing uh, the results from what happened back east with, uh, with fellows first crashing uh, in warm up the other day, and, and now Spinard being out of it. Uh, definitely goes to show anything can happen. Tony's got a lot of laps. He's got a lot more experience than I do. But uh, it'll be a good race. I think everybody just, you know, has to keep a cool head and uh, remind each other where everybody's going. It's nice if we're in the front row and Frank's coming through, that maybe we'll get a little train going and maybe we'll win this thing. You can bet number one Frank Ellers will be looking to make this final his race and put a lock on the Western Championship. Kevin Dowler, number 35 in the fourth row, will also be coming on hard in an attempt to snatch the title from Ellers. Andy Mahood, number 13 in row five, will have the pedal to the metal, taking aim at number eight, John Simonson in row two, and the final ticket to the shootout. And of course, Trevor Siebert will attempt the almost impossible task of winning from 13th position. Paul, over to you. They come off the long S's leading onto the front straightaway. Murchie and Morris on the front row. The green flag goes and the race is underway. Under the green flag and under pressure in front of this 20 car field. Number 38, Orville Murchie hanging on to the inside of the track through the corner. Barely holding number 88, Tony Morris at bay. 
The Camaros and Firebirds stream by. Morris is still giving Murchie a lesson in door handle to door handle racing. And now holds the inside line through the left-hander, but he's going to be on the outside now through this right-hander. And Simonson, number eight, finds a new line through three, but manages to get abreast of Frank Ellers, number one. Whoa, there he goes again. Simonson off the road. The happy man from Calgary may be pushing just a bit too hard. Now it's Orville Murchie on top, followed by 88 Morris, Payne, and Wade Lee in 79. Look at this. Morris is right on Murchie's bumper. Over the top of Deer's Leap, heading down the chute into the hairpin. This is still a volatile field. No one has yet nailed down a secure position. And again, Morris has the inside line and with some tail wagging, parlays it into the lead. Murchie hangs on to second, but Wade Lee's STP Camaro is right there as well. Coming through the S's, down the start, finish straight, and the end of lap one, it's 88, Tony Morris, 38, Orville Murchie, 79, Wade Lee, 75, Rick Payne, and one, Frank Allers. The Motomaster lap charts are out, but Morris and Allers would have to be blind not to know the score with this nose-to-tail traffic. Morris, a driving instructor at this track, shows Murchie the way into corner one. There's Wade Lee diving under Murchie and into second. A bold move, taking advantage of Murchie's wide entry. And Trevor Siebert has already moved from 13th to 8th. Now on board with Frank Ellers, he looks inside, massages Payne's bumper a little, but even intimidation tactics don't phase Payne, who still holds on to fourth. Morris and Lee are opening up a gap on the field. Kevin Dowler, number 35, has moved into sixth, and Andy Mahood, number 13, now running seventh, with John Simonson having dropped back to 11th. So the shootout is looking good for Andy. And Tony Morris is looking good, too, as he and Wade Lee part the win for those behind. Over Deer's Leap, heading into the hairpin. Morris out front, Lee, Murchie, Payne, and Kevin Dowler, number 35, puts a move on Frank Allers. Allers holds his ground, bouncing Dowler to the inside. There's no quarter being given in this Western final anywhere on this track. Through the S's, Tony Morris looks strong. His Motomaster Camaro obviously well dialed in today. We'll be back with more right after this. Welcome back to a glorious day for racing in the Players Limited GM Motorsport Western Series Final from Westwood, B.C. Number 88, Tony Morris, and 79, Wade Lee continue to be the class of this very strong field with the veteran Morris so far able to hold off the hard-charging youngster from Calgary. Kevin Dowler's dreams of a Western Championship have died in the pits. He's out of the race with mechanical problems. Here's the Edmonton driver with Paul. Kevin, this wasn't the plan. What happened? Oh, I don't know. Can't steer the car. I was kind of up the hill with Frank, and we got together. He pulled down on me. Tough luck, Kevin. You're still going to Quebec. I know. <laughs> I wanted to go a better way than this, though. So Dowler's done, but we're on board as Lee is charging. He slides out of the draft and takes Morris on the inside of corner one to become number one in this Western final. Now the roles are reversed as the pursuer becomes the pursuee. As Wade did to him, Morris will now try to fill Lee's mirrors and play the high-speed psychological game of nerves that even good drivers can sometimes have trouble dealing with. And it takes just a momentary lapse in concentration, a poor driving decision, and bang, you're back in second. But Lee knows the game too, and as a previous winner, he also knows how to work a lead. Charging up the long back straightaway over the famous Deer's Leap where the cars get very light. Number six, Rick Moore tries a little motocross maneuver but opts for pavement after all. The man from Maple Ridge, B.C. is currently 16th. Now on board with John Simonson as he uses the draft to overtake Andy Mahood for seventh. As tires smoke and bodies bang going into the hairpin. And farther back, number 77, Carl Haar moves under five. Don Geroniak for 11th. And there's Trevor Sieber trading paint with Frank Ellers as he muscles into fifth, Paul. After a sensational 10-lap battle, Wade Lee finally passed Tony Morris, takes the lead, Morris second, Orville Murchie and Rick Payne for third and fourth. Trevor Siebert, rookie sensation, up to fifth. A real battle going on for seventh with Andy Mahood and John Simonson. They're not fighting for seventh, they're fighting to go to Quebec. Now back to Paul Chater. To Quebec, the shootout, and a shot at $50,000 in prize money. We know Wade Lee and Tony Morris will be there, but right now these drivers are fully concentrated on the task at hand, winning this one. 
There have been battles galore behind these two, but all that might as well be happening on another planet as far as these guys are concerned. Drivers are taught to race against the track. In other words, to try to use perfect technique everywhere, because the more accurate you are, the faster you are. But that theory is hard to put into practice when you're this close together. Rick Payne resides in third, Orville Murchie holds fourth, and Trevor Siebert, in a remarkable drive, has locked into fifth. On board with John Simonson as he is rudely rebuffed by Frank Allers in a vain attempt to wrest sixth spot from the two-time Western champion. Allers must feel like a pinball the way he's been bouncing off people today. It looks like Frank Allers will be wearing number one on his Camaro game next season and carrying the Western crown to the shootout. How quickly do you think you'll be able to get down there and sort the track out, get up to speed? Uh, well, we have a full day's testing on the track before the actual event, so uh, we should be in really good shape by the time uh, the Saturday qualifying's come around. No disadvantage? I don't think so, not really. You've, uh, you've run against Bernard before in the East, I think? Yeah, we ran at Montreal and uh, at uh, Toronto Molson Indy. Um, I qualified faster than him at Toronto, and uh, we, we were very close in the race, so I expect to have a really tight race there. There's number 55, Murray Craig of Langley, B.C., giving Andy Mahood a run for eighth place. Number 75, Rick Payne is comfortable in third, but heading into the hairpin, Orville Murchie is uncomfortably aware of Trevor Siebert's bid to steal fourth. A terrific crowd here at Westwood today, and they've been treated to a terrific Players Limited GM Motorsport Western Series final. And there's still more action, as number six, Rick Moore pulls by 33, Barry Hikoski, and into 14th. No matter where you finish, every improved position is a small victory. We'll be back for the big one after this. Welcome back to the final laps of the Players Limited GM Motorsport Western Series Final from Westwood Motorsport Park in British Columbia. Our leader is 79, Wade Lee, who took the lead in his bright orange and blue SDP Camaro from 88, Tony Morris, on lap nine. But the drive of the day belongs to this man, number nine, Trevor Siebert. The Western Rookie of the Year has moved from 13th to 5th and goes wide, trying to get by number 38, Orville Murchie, and into fourth. Still, he remains relentless on Murchie's tail. Number one, Frank Allers, and number eight, John Simonson, also close in behind. Down the hill to the hairpin, Sieber tries again on the inside, one of the best places to pass on this track. Outbreaking Murchie to move into fourth place. He's done it. With two wins and three seconds, Siebert has served notice that he may be the man to beat next season. But right now, the man to beat is Wade Lee driving an intelligent and controlled race. Let's go to trackside and Paul Gilgan. Paul down here at trackside. Wade Lee not only passed Tony Morris, but he's opened up a three-second margin on him. Behind that comes Rick Payne, Trevor Siebert, Orville Murchie, Frank Allers, and John Simonson. The drive of the day so far clearly has to be Trevor Siebert, starting 13th, worked his way up to fourth. John Simonson in seventh, back now in front of Andy Mahood. His job is to stay there. Back to Paul Chater. Thanks, Paul. It looks like Frank Allers has found some speed. He's on Orville Murchie's rear bumper and maybe setting Murchie up for a pass. the back straight, Murchie trying to hold off Allers as they come up to Deer's Leap. On board now with Frank Allers over the crest of the hill, he moves to the inside on Orville Murchie and takes away the line into the hairpin. So our 87 and 88 double champion isn't through yet as he moves into fifth, dropping Murchie back to sixth, but Murchie tries to retaliate, but Allers improves his position into the S's and takes aim now on Trevor Siebert. Wade Lee finished seventh overall in the series in 88 and will be no worse than fourth overall this year with four top five finishes to his credit. At 24, he's another of the young lions in this series destined for big things in the years to come. And today, he appears destined for a season-ending victory and the big lion's share of the nearly $40,000 in prize money. Rick Payne, 75, is headed for one of his best finishes ever. Currently in 30, has driven well from lap one. Ninth overall in the Drivers' Championship, Rick is a consistent driver who will also be heard from in 1990. 
Tony Morris was runner up to his teammate Frank Ellers in the 88 championship and will be the first to tell you the young guys get better every year. On board now with Frank Ellers as he gives one of these young guys a taste of championship form. On the back straight, Allers moves under Trevor Siebert and holds his inside position into the hairpin. Under braking some slower traffic in front, he's got the rookie boxed out and makes it look easy as he slides into fourth. Siebert tries to reply, but Allers holds firm and the youngster falls one down into fifth. Last lap nail biting time. Wade Lee knows he's just a few kilometers from his second victory of the season on this track. It would bookend the series for him, giving Lee a win in the first and last race of the year. bit as they head down the back straightaway here at Westwood cresting the rise and onto the downslope toward the hairpin Morris will have to do it here if at all he closes up under braking Lee glances in his mirror and holds the lead through the hairpin can he hang on through the S's he's got an advantage over Tony Morris Behind the leaders, Allers shows a wide car to Trevor Siebert as the rookie pushes the champion through the corner. Allers holds on to fourth. Now here's Paul at the line as the checkers fall for Lee. Wade Lee flashes by the start-finish line and just holds off Tony Morris for a tremendous conclusion to today's Players Limited GM Motorsports Series West race. In third place, Rick Payne. Fourth place, Frank Allers takes it at the last minute from Trevor Siebert. John Simonson is going to Quebec. Paul Tater. The shootout looms, Paul. But first, let's give these guys their due. It was a smart and well-fought race for the top three in this Western final. And here they are. And our winner for the second time in Westwood this year from Calgary, Wade Lee. Over here, Wade. Hey, Wade. A proud day for Wade Lee, and a proud one, too, for our Western Series Drivers' Champion. Now a winner in three consecutive seasons, Frank Allers. Tough, consistent, and talented, Frank proved he has the right stuff once again. But next year could be different. Paul? The problem, Tony, is every year there's a fresh wave of young guys. They just keep coming. They can stay away, you know. I mean, this is too much. Keep going down every year. But it was a nice race today, and I really thank Motormaster, my sponsor, and we're pleased to be here, and I was pleased to be on the podium, and it's been a good season. Wade, there's no better way to put the car in the trailer to go to Quebec next week? No, there is no better way. It's, uh, it's a good win for us, and it's a good win for the team, and uh, it's a good win for STP and Lee Baron. After uh, wrecking one car halfway through the season, it's a, it's a good way to end off the second half of the season for us. Well, I'm, I'm really looking forward to going east now. I can focus on that. Today we were sort of preoccupied with uh, getting the car through this race in one piece, which we just barely did. Uh, so we're really looking forward to racing these eastern guys. Wow, what a day. Two exceptional races and two fine champions crowned. And it's not over yet. Join us for the national shootout when the best in the west meets the best in the east. There's been lots of uh, comments flying east and west. And uh, we'll uh, see who gets to talk last, I guess. Richard Spinard and Ron Fellows and all the big guys from the East will be there. And we're really looking forward to, to the challenge. Uh, I have the confidence. I think we're going to go in and uh, surprise some people. It's uh, definitely going to be a shootout, as it's called. And uh, I don't know. I'm just going to go over there and, and do my best. The guys in the West, um, they're, they're good. And uh, if, if they're as good as they think that they are compared to us, then they should be able to learn the track relatively quickly and be very competitive the whole weekend. I think with a little bit more time, a little more experience, we can really show them what we got. It's going to be easy. I'm going to qualify well and charge for the 25000 I think it would be the combination of a dream, and uh, I think that's really important to me. It seems that if you dream about something, sometimes you get very disappointed if it doesn't happen. You know, it's the best thing that's ever happened to Canadian motorsports. It's $25,000. Um, I'd like to be the guy that took it home. Uh, you're going to see a bunch of hungry guys out there fighting for $25,000 for first place, and uh, it's going to be interesting. 
Next week from Quebec's Mont Tremblant, it's the $50,000 Players Limited GM Motorsports Series Shootout. Join us.